welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is going to be another uh, Photoshop video tutorial of using Photoshop Elements. First, as always, I'd like to point out, um, stop by the website jackstechcorner.com and check out all the great DVD collections I have available here. Uh, we have DVDs Volume 1, Volume 2, as well as a Mac edition for your Mac folks out there. And as you can see, it does also contain iPhoto, and that's iPhoto 09. So you'll be ready to go with the latest iPhoto out. And there's also a two-disc set. If you're not interested in the uh, DVDs, but you still want to help the show out, it's always greatly appreciated if you just click on the Donate button, and you can donate anything you wish to help the show. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I've been receiving a lot of emails from a lot of you folks out there that said, Jack, we'd really like to know how to do a photo layout. Just a layout of some different pictures that then we can print and actually frame, you know, or, or put them in a scrapbook or whatever. Um, so I thought I would do that tutorial for you today. And this is kind of what I came up with, just a basic little uh, uh, photo here. You know, it's one picture, but we have three individual pictures on top of that that actually makes up the picture that we're going to print off. And I'm also going to show you a little uh, little clue, or a little trick I should say, on how to actually print uh, your pictures off using this method that will make them look a lot nicer and save you a lot of headaches down the road. So how did we get to this point? Well let's go ahead and close this out and we're going to start from scratch. We're going to take all these and I'm just going to close these out and we'll get you started right from the beginning. Now a lot of people ask, Jack, why do you start in the organizer and show us how to right click and go to edit? It's mainly because I feel it's pretty important um, that you're able to do that. And if you keep doing it, uh, you know, repeatedly and repeatedly, and, and you get a good process of actually um, knowing how to do this, it's just, it becomes second nature. So what we need to do first is we're going to open up um, different pictures at one time in our editor. To do this, all we have to do is select one, hold your control key down, select another one, and then hold, you know, holding the control key down, select the last one. Then just pick any of them and right click on it, and you can just go down to full edit. Now, a lot of you out there uh, from reading your emails, I know that you get a little bit confused on these actual pictures here the way these are set up you get a little confused because you have three pictures in here and you don't know how to actually click these things to make them work for you well I'm going to show you a way around that also and the way I like to do it uh, you know and you'll come up with your own way of doing things but the nice way to do this is just to have these stacked up the way you want to put them on your actual picture itself this is kind of the order I want to do it in just like this so this way they're ready to go for me so I can start pulling them right on top of that new picture. So how do we create the new file? How do we know what size to create is a, a big key in this whole process. And the way to basically learn how to create the size that we're going to have to do is just to uh, create the largest that we know we can print which is actually 11 by 14 I know a lot of you don't like to print that big, so let's just do an 8 by 10. So we'll go to New, under File, New, Blank File, and we're going to call this Layout. And as you can see here, I set it to Width of 8 and Height by 10. So if the longer side is 10 and the height of the paper is 8, that's telling you we're laying this out in a portrait mode is what we're basically going to do. So it's an 8 by 10. Make sure this is not set to pixels. You want to make sure this is set to inches. Both of these will be inches. Your resolution should be 300. And the background could be uh, any of these actually. It could be a background color, transparent, or white. I like to use white just because it's a very uh, neutral background. And when I print these things off, it's basically on a white piece of paper. So it looks really nice. 
So now we have that done. Let's click OK. And that is going to give us our backdrop that we're going to use to start laying these pictures on. Now here's a trick. We normally go up under View, Fit the Screen. But here's another trick, and I think I've showed this to you once. Just double click on the hand. And that's going to make that a larger picture here. It's going to fit it up and down here on the screen. Now, first thing we need to do is we're going to click on the first picture we want. And immediately you're going to see over here that the picture is selected, not this one that we're working on. Don't be concerned about that. That's where a lot of people get stuck. They try to get all these things showing up in the layers palette at one time. It's not going to happen. So we're going to click on this picture. Now what we want to do is click on our Move tool, select. We're going to select all. That's going to select the whole picture. And just click in the center of it and drag it and drop it right on top of that new white piece of paper that we have there. Now you can see that the layer started here. Layer 1 is on top of the background like you'd want it to be. So don't let this confuse you. Now this is a little bit too big to get our other pictures beside it, so we're going to have to resize it. I always suggest go from a corner. Any one of these corners, left click and pull in. So it's left click, let's pull in. When you're doing this, make sure that this box stays checked. It's constrain proportions. Because what happens is, then your people don't get all uh, skinny, and uh, you know what have you skinny fat tall I'm sure you've seen that in some pictures when people resize this way we can resize this and as you see it stays in a proportion that you can still view the picture alright so we're going to do that pull it and place it wherever you wish then click the checkbox now that that is done you have that first picture here the reason I said to layer these like this we're going to click the little minus button. We're going to minimize this back into our bin. Now we're ready to work with the second picture that we're going to put onto our piece of uh, our sheet of paper. Let's click on select all and we're going to do the same thing. Let's just click on this and move it over. As you can see again, right here it gives us another layer. Let's pull it down a little bit so we can find the handles here, these little handlebars. And we're going to left click and we're once again going to drag down. We're going to resize this. Once you get that done, click the checkbox or simply hit enter on your keyboard. Once we have that done, again, minimize this out of the way. Now let's get the, the birthday uh, cake here, the birthday cheesecake. I know that's what one of the girls wanted, so that's what they got, cheesecake. Select all pull it out of the way here so you can pull it over and drop it on top of that paper again and there we go once again we are going to resize this and I try to do the best I can when I'm laying pictures out like this to match up with the uh, other picture you also have the option of laying this picture on top of this one you can resize it this way and then pull it back and you know it's just about the same size and if it doesn't fit that's okay don't size it smaller just stick it in here where you want to put it click the checkbox now click on the second layer here so we can highlight this one see if you click on the layer you're going to highlight which one you're clicking on and let's just resize this just a little bit more there we go. Now again, let's bring this up so we don't get confused and minimize it. Now we're just simply working on our actual picture. If I click the background, it gets rid of all the selections around it, and that's our actual layout. Now to make sure you have everything aligned, here's, here's a little trick that you need to know. If you go under View and Grid, it'll lay the grids out on your actual picture. So you can use those grid lines. You can see here where this is on this grid line, but over here it's not. So when you print this, it's going to have that downslope look to it. So I'm going to click on that layer, and I can actually move this up just a little bit. This is the same way. You can see here in between here, you have just about the same spacing. And we're good. 
Once you get your layout completed and everything's lined up on your grids, just go ahead and click on View, Grid. Get rid of the grids again. Now, the next important step to do with this is you don't want to print all this. When you print 8x10, you can print all this out, um, but really, what's the sense of doing that? So what I like to do is I like to crop mine down. So I'm going to click on the Crop tool. And folks, if you move your mouse along here, we've talked about this before, it will tell you what these tools are. And I know a lot of you have been emailing me asking me, Jack, can you do nothing but a tool segment? And maybe I'll have to put one together and show you how to use each of these tools. But over the course of all these videos and on the DVD, it explains the tools. Uh, we use them as we come upon uh, needing them. So uh, I think it covers it pretty well. But if you need more in-depth training, maybe we'll have to do a video on just tools. But I don't want to slow anybody else down out there that's been uh, pulling along with us here and going through these videos and actually learning pretty quickly. But like I said, if you're new to Elements, just email me let me know, and we'll see if we can work something out. So I have the Crop tool. All you have to do is left click and we're just going to do some cropping. Just like this. And I'm just left clicking and pulling these up a little bit and down just to make it look a little tighter in there. Hit enter and it's going to crop it out. So there's our layout. We have different pictures on here and now we want to print this. We know we set it up as an 8 by 10. You can see here we got 10 inches wide but now it's only 5.11 5 inches high. That's just because we crop it, so that's okay. It's nothing to worry about, nothing to be concerned about. Um, it's just the way it laid it out, so that's okay. So now we want to do here, I told you I wanted to show you a little trick in printing to make sure you know how you actually have your printing. So if you click on File right now and go to Print, normally it's set up like this. All right where it's actually set as actual size we're going to change this to 8 by 10 now here's the trick a lot of people get into when they print this off it's going to crop these edges and that's simply because of the way it's laid out if you look at it it's laid out as a portrait we laid this out originally as a landscape so click on the landscape view down here that's going to change it to landscape but you see it still wants to crop the edges off so here's the trick. See where it says crop to fit print properties? Uncheck that. And then you'll have a nice layout there. It's still within the perimeters of the page. So when you print this thing, it should print out just fine. Anytime you have a picture that you're printing out and it seems to be cutting people's heads off. Now granted folks, and I've seen this a lot, if you take a picture and you're trying to get it as full frame as possible when you take the picture, and you chop the top of their heads off or chop the feet off, cropping is not going to help you because there's no information there to print. So be careful. When I take the picture, I always like to leave the rule that, you know, at least you can look through your viewfinder and, you know, at least leave an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. So that'll get you started with that. Okay. So I hope that you understand now how to print. Once you set that up with your printer, then you would just simply hit print you can print that off. For those out there that's not sure how to save yet, I would save this now as a JPEG. When you do that, it's going to flatten these images down. So you would do a save as. We would have it somewhere. The normal format is PSD. That's the Photoshop format. Click this pull down menu and look for JPEG. And then you would just save it. And when you're going to take these out to be printed, remember, always turn this to large file, all the way up to maximum. Click OK. That's going to save that out. And now it's ready for you to put it on your thumb drive or on your memory card. Uh, take it out to Kinko's or any kind of department store you may have, a Walmart or whatever, and uh, you would print that picture off. Myself, I like the online developers. Um, and I would always suggest to use online because it's just easy. You don't have to leave your home. And the pictures will come to you in just a couple days, so it doesn't take them too long. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on a photo layout, and hopefully you use this, you know, and play around with it, and I'm sure you can come up with a lot of great ideas for this. Uh, it, it's a, a lot of fun. Like I said, it's also used for scrapbooking. You can put multiple pictures together. They don't have to be in a, in a row by any means. You know, you can take these things 
and you can actually move them up and down here uh, you can you know have them uneven you know use your imagination lay your stuff out differently and um, I'm sure you'll have a really really good time with this so until next time folks make sure you stop by the website jackstechcorner.com check out the forums I try to get more people in the forums thanks to everybody that's been subscribing to the YouTube videos hey over 2500 subscribers out there of you guys 2500 people viewing these videos that's remarkable I never thought we'd have that kind of uh, feedback or that many of you actually watching these videos when I started you know when I hit the first hundred I was overwhelmed and now we have 2500 of you watching these videos thank you very much so until next time I uh, hope you join us and uh, come back to see more videos and if you're not subscribed click on the subscribe link that doesn't cost you a thing and I'll see you back here very soon until next time keep those shutters clicking keep the editors editing I'll see you back here soon Bye for now.